What is the difference between coding, programming, and computer science? Most people don't know the difference, but there is one and it is prevalent. So I will show the differences as I have experienced them while making a spiral. But first, we have to explain how this all started. Pedro, the current main artist for Phantom Thieves, sent this image of the Batman transition in response to me asking what we should do for the game's battle transitions. My mind then thought, Oh, wouldn't it be cool if there was like a spiraling transition? Haha, <laughs> wouldn't that be cool? Little did I know that I would spend all my free time thinking about it for like the next week or so trying to make this whole thing. Let's start with step one. Coding is about turning human ideas into machine code. This is normally all that's required for making games on game engines, as they do all the complex math for you and give you the code tools to, do, to use their stuff. But since we're not using a game engine, we gotta think, so let's get... How does a spiral work? I'm glad you asked. Kind of by just eyeballing it, you can realize that Spiral has roughly something to do with circles and spinning, and you'd be right. So let's take every pixel and rotate about the center. We'll first find the distance between the center and the pixel, and the angle between the pixel, center, and a static point far right of the center, and we simply change the angle. And it's just rotating. This is because the edges of the image should be rotating more than the inside. This is why the eye of the hurricane is so much more peaceful than the edges of a hurricane. It's where the least amount of rotation occurs. So, we make each pixel rotate based on the radius. The farther it is from the center, the more it'll rotate. The closer it is to the center, the less it'll rotate. Alright, pretty good. Let's do it with code and it's lagging like shit. Yeah, so my computer has a resolution of 2560 times 1440, which means that there are roughly 3.5 million pixels on my screen. When we calculate distance, we use square root, and when we calculate angle, we use inverse tangent. Calculating 3.5 million square roots and inverse tangents is not feasibly possible. So what do we do now? Well, this is where we gotta do a little bit of- First off, inverse tangent is stupidly expensive, but I found that the positive part of this equation is actually pretty close to the positive part of inverse tangent, and since inverse tangent is an odd function, we can mirror this to get an inverse tangent approximation that only uses a few divisions, multiplications, and additions. Well, it's better, but it's not nearly good enough. Now it's finally time to apply some. The first and easiest thing to do is ask C++ to optimize the code compilation. Humans write code in English, and C++ turns it into binary for the computer to run. This process of turning code into binary is called compilation. The C++ compiler has options for if you want C++ to look for optimizations in your code while compiling it. I don't have it enabled all the time because it roughly doubles the time it takes to compile the code, which will make the game more efficient to run, but it'll make it a lot harder for me to test and recompile over and over again. The next thing to do is do a little thing called multi-threading. As some computer nerds know, your computer has many processors, and processors are actually what run the programs on your computer. When you run a program, only one of your processors can actually run it at a time, and the rest are just chilling doing other stuff. So, if we make our program run many other sub-programs, we can actually utilize the other processors that your computer has. If we take the whole screen and divide it into sections, we can make each of the sub-processes do the math with each section. This substantially helps, but it isn't what we need to push us to the final frontier of no lag. That's where we get to the really nitty gritty computer science. We calculate radius and angle and all that stuff, but do we really need to calculate with such high decimal point accuracy? The issue here is that pixels on the screen can't be divided up into parts, and it works on whole numbers, so the whole level of decimal precision calculated is extremely excessive. But then, I had an epiphany. And by epiphany, I mean I found something on Wikipedia. The midpoint circle algorithm, basically a simple algebra to draw a pixel circle efficiently. Why this helps is because instead of treating the whole screen as a bunch of pixels forming a rectangle, we can use the midpoint circle algorithm to think of the screen as concentric pixel circles, and we just rotate those. We don't even need to calculate angles anymore, because we can just estimate the angle based on the number of pixels that each circle contains. Running with all these optimizations finally brings us down to having each frame be less than 16 milliseconds, which means we can finally have beautiful 60 frame per second spirals. There are a whole bunch of other optimizations that I thought of, but I'm not doing because they're just completely unnecessary. For example, when I was talking about multi-threading, the threads are actually getting created every frame and destroyed every frame, which takes less than a millisecond to do both of those combined, but it's not really worth the optimization time to make the threads not be destroyed all the time. Another one is that I could do bit manipulation stuff in the midpoint circle algorithm, but I don't think that's necessary because the C++ compiler, being the smartest day I ever fucking made, probably does it better than I ever could and ever will do in my entire life. All hell to C++ compiler, our machine god, thanks for noticing me, TTFN, ta for now, bye.